Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode that is something a little bit different. For those of you who don't know, I'm still very much a full-time working designer. YouTube is something that I really enjoy doing on the side as a way to engage with an amazing community that's been built around my previous work. But I still have a lot that I want to achieve in design. This year, I'm contracted to work on some mind-blowing projects that I cannot wait to share with you as they come to life. But before I could do that, I thought it'd be interesting to look at some of the most exciting projects that I was part of last year in 2022. Now, not only will I talk about what the projects were, I want to also talk about how we, as a design company, approached the design briefs, some of the obstacles we faced, and what we learned along the way. So, without further ado, let's jump back in time to the top of 2022. Kicking us off is the Atmo AI supercomputer. Now the initial brief from the Atmo engineers was to create a striking and functional industrial design for the first generation Atmo weather supercomputer that drives awareness, purchase, and successful deployment of the system throughout the world. Now that was the technical brief, but in layman's terms, what does that actually mean? Well, this is not your average desktop computer. This is an eight foot tall supercomputer straight out of the future. This computer will predict with the utmost reliability and the utmost speed conditions, which could predict and influence agricultural use throughout the world. Now we know that in countries like India, these countries depend on very accurate, very precise information. Now we knew that the design had to become a statement, something that could be displayed in public and that people could actually interact with. The design quickly became almost like a piece of furniture, which had to be modular for scalability. What I learned from this process was that you can actually design something that has an emotional charge or an emotional aura to it that is static. The fact that it doesn't even look like a computer, that's one of the things I think that we can say we're most proud of is the fact that it could potentially lead to a new age of computer design and even in product design. We know that the age of supercomputers is always developing quite quickly and we can go way back to the beginning of them. For example, when we first experienced the Cray computers or even if you remember 2001, A Space Odyssey, HAL, those are all those types of computers, but now we've been able to give the new type of supercomputer a very unique look, not that boring, just modular in a room, hidden away from the public sort of look, but rather something that you would be quite proud to put into a museum, into the Museum of Modern Art in New York, for example, somewhere where it can actually still function, but still resemble an item of extreme technological beauty. Moving on from the Atmo, the next project, which actually started in 2020, but wasn't finished until 2022, is the Baby Arc. Now the product started out as high-tech and also looking at what we call biomimicry or nature's way of designing. In other words, how does nature approach designing things for safety? And the basic initial concept of the design theme was based off the shape of an egg. Now, why an egg? Well, the structural shape of an egg is due to many, many reasons, but the shape is a certain shape due to its strength. And so we use this principle as the beginning of the design theme, as well as looking at different elements of, for example, the woodpecker. How does it do what it does, which is beating its beak countless times against a wooden trunk to create a hole? This technology, this, this type of nature's influence has benefited us greatly when considering the overall design of different elements. 
few reasons why I'm extremely proud of this project is because we've been able to innovate, again, not only with design, but also in the application of the different types of materials which have created an object that is as strong, as tough, as resistant, and as protective as can possibly be with today's technology. And again, exuding a feeling of warm emotion to it. It's not really a cold, sterile object, but rather something that is warm and inviting to sit your baby into. No one wants to put their child into a machine. Overall, I'm very happy the way it's come out and even more important, the fact that it's going to be very, very positive in terms of saving lives for our future generations. So to add to another very busy, very full 2022, we were also working on the design of the new EV tool, the Archer Maker. Now the Archer Maker is the prototype version of the new Archer EV tool, which we'll be taking to the skies as a flying taxi in, let's say, approximately 2025. What's important is that the Archer Maker is an EV toll, electric vertical takeoff and landing jet, that is part of the industry that we call the new age of mobility. These are, to put it in layman's terms, the Uber of the skies. Now, the very cool thing about designing the Archer Maker is that working with, obviously, no pun intended, top flight engineers, we were able to achieve a design that looks stunning, not so much like what you would expect an aircraft to look like. Instead of, let's say, a sausage with wings attached to it, this was our chance to design something a little bit more aquatic looking, even avian looking, something a little bit more influenced by the shapes that nature is intended to go through different mediums, denser mediums like perhaps uh, water or air. We're looking also at quite efficient packaging because this is an experience when you fly in one of these. We need to permeate throughout the design, especially in the interior design, the feeling of safety, of comfort, of, uh, of security in a certain way. So the main obstacles in designing the Archer Maker were uh, needing to follow some of the rules of center of gravity in terms of being able to distribute proportion-wise, some of the elements like the landing gears and the different types of areas that we needed to reserve for special compartments as the avionics, for example, or the luggage itself. This type of design is something very fresh, still clean sheet design almost, where your influence as a designer can start to mark a trend, can start to mark the first steps, the first building blocks of design in this new age. And so that, of course, is quite exciting to be involved with. Obviously, there's a whole future ahead of it that perhaps in 50 years time, these EV tolls might not look anything like they do today, but you have to start from somewhere. And what an honor to be able to say that you contributed to those first steps in EV toll design. Now, another 2022 big hit for us was the chance to design my very first own watch called the Cosmos. The fact that we came out with a watch that is so unique looking and so clean in the sense of being able to read it. Watches for me are things that are meant to be super efficient, super precise. I look outwards to the universe for a lot of my inspiration. I look out and see that we are just very minute in this whole enormous expanse of space. And I wanted to give that feeling of wonder to the watch. Now, one of the most important factors about a watch is what we call the human factor, the human ergonomics, the actual interface, the way the watch fits on the wrist. Now, if you can look at this, the way the Cosmos is shaped, you can see that it has quite a curved section view to it through here which makes it very comfortable to adapt to the wrist when you're wearing it. You can see that it basically mimics the shape of the wrist when you're wearing it. So in that sense, quite comfortable to actually wear. Not expensive because obviously watches can be very expensive, but they all pretty much do the same thing. 
just different levels of what we call complications, for example, or movements. But I must say it's turned out exactly how I intended it to look. And I'm quite pleased with it. I think this is a watch that I'll be wearing just about at any event I would ever want to go to. And another super exciting project that we had in 2022 is a very special one for me because it involves two wheels, two wheels. And this is a bike called the cargo type bike, the cargo segment. The brief was to design a cargo bike that a driver of a high-end luxury car would enjoy just as much riding as driving his car. So you can imagine that it was a full bodied type of design, not looking more like a frame, typical frame of a bicycle in the back with a cargo box on the front, but instead a very uniquely one piece design that pretty much incorporated or engulfed the whole shape of the bicycle from front to back very cohesive looking. Quite a few bits of innovation were involved because we introduced smart technology to the actual electronics of the bike. We also included quite a few additional safety elements to make the bike more safe than the current segment level. And we also introduced ergonomics to make it even more comfortable to ride and a little bit more caring for the passengers or the way you would actually transport some of your, your products in, in the cargo box area. So all in all, the design of the bike was really a standout design in terms of being instantly recognizable, instantly, let's call it attractive and, and, and desirable. And again, it was a, a step up, I think, in terms of designing uh, a bike for this segment, for the cargo segment. Once Baby Arc was complete, I was able to make room for a new project, and the one that came in next was quite the challenge, to say the least. The product was called Capsule Lab, and what Capsule Lab is, is a home-based product that produces skin cream on demand for your specific cream type. So essentially, it's very similar to an espresso machine, for example, where instead of pouring out coffee, you're pouring out the best quality cream say for a moisturizer, say for any type of skin issues or skin uh, care that you might need. And instead of going out to a department store or wherever to purchase it, you're able to pour yourself the exact quantity at home when you need it. Imagine being able to whip up your own health and beauty products at home with just the click of a button. We knew that it needed to look at home in a kitchen, in a bathroom environment and it needed a signature design element that would elevate it into the echelon of products that are instantly recognizable. So the way we achieved this visual signature was illumination around the bottom edge, giving the impression that it was actually floating off the surface. Now that idea was born from the impression that it first gave us without the illumination when it was sitting there on the table in front of us, quite impressive but yet still a little bit heavy in its nature heavy in the way that it just sat there we wanted to lift it off the table and by illuminating the bottom surface of it it did give it the impression that it was actually hovering above the table above the surface where it was sitting on and that worked very very efficiently now I'm really proud about this project because it's allowed us to inject a little bit of design emotion, design value into a product that normally has not very much emotion at all, not, not very much attention to aesthetic details, not a lot of next level thinking of how can we make a product that comes into your home environment look a little bit more special than you would expect. And that feeling that you have a product that looks unique, looks beautiful, looks desirable in your home environment, I think it's something that is one of the missing links we have nowadays in design that basically you buy a product for its function and, and, and not really care too much about the aesthetics, you accept it, but to actually have a desirable product that you really appreciate it for, not only for its function, but also for its design values, I think is quite unique. It just takes a little bit of extra thinking to add that design extra to it, that extra element of, of 
je ne sais quoi to the design to elevate it to the next next level. I think we've really accomplished that with a very simple design, yet almost exquisite in its simplicity. It does give it that extra feeling of being a special product uh, in your home. On top of all that, we're designing a new range of cars that I'm not legally allowed to say anything about. But I may be able to say something about it in the review of 2023. So there you have it, a wrap up of the projects that we as a design company, Frank Stephenson Design, have done in 2022 with 2023 bringing on even more exciting projects. I look forward to sharing more with you along the way. And in case you don't know it, you can get the Frank Stephenson Coloring Book, which has almost all of my designs in it, published by Fireball, Fireball Publishing, by going to the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell button next to it. And I'll see you in the next episode.